Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. It's Wednesday. It's July the 17th. This will be our chart lesson for today. And I know this looks a little busy, and I apologize for it. Uh, you definitely don't want your chart looking this busy while you're trading. But I see a couple of different things working. I see a trading range. You can see that the strong resistance is around 16.78 and a quarter or so. And then there's support down here around between 1673 and 1674. Uh, but at the same time, there is a little bit of a channel working up here. You know, maybe we just had a spike in channel here. And you can clearly see this channel coming into play. We overshot it here and we overshot it here. But now we're back inside. And there's the, there's the kind of midpoint like what we've been seeing lately on a lot of these trends. And uh, so I, you know, there's always multiple ways to see this, or I shouldn't say always, but many times there's multiple ways to see this. So either way you saw it, you really can almost come to the same conclusion um, as you might have otherwise. But generally the best thing to do is draw these short-term channels. You can see this one was working down. We got the break, a double top, and then we went back down, made a new low. Uh, but we had, and that was the first break of this bigger channel, and there's your retest on that. But at the same time, you had this channel working up. You you might have looked like a break there, but this was the first time you knew, you finally got a break, a double bottom, a move to a new high. Uh, there's a short trap right in there, and then um, then you move back down and you test the low side again. You know you could have seen it as a range, or you could have even if you saw this, or maybe you saw it both ways like me, uh, and. You know, look at this little channel working down. You had the break and then a retest with a new low. Same thing. Then you had this move right here. Look at the little break right there, the retest with a new high. And then you got this one coming down, a break, a retest with a new low. You got this one moving up, a break with a two legs up to a new high. And then it started working down again. Um, it's The volume's really dried up here in the afternoon. But that's from 12.30 to... 130. We've really had about our hour of correction, so um, you know we could even go higher from here. Wouldn't surprise me if we don't come lower because we're really finding resistance up here around 1678. But um, you know, I'd just be real careful trading all these little choppy ranges like this. You never know what's going to happen. Um, but let me talk about the trades that I saw. Actually, I want to talk about one other thing first. Let me back out here a little bit. You've seen the big picture. But it's amazing how many times I'll get uh, emails from people, and I got more than one today. So if you think I'm talking about you, I'm probably you may be part of the one I'm talking about. But um, I'm probably talking about I'm actually talking about mel multiple people because I've gotten this more than once lately. So I feel like it's time to address it again, just to make sure people understand. But when you're entering, the whole idea is to look to enter. With the trend, if the market is trending like this right here, you're looking to enter with the trend when prices come off of, of the strong support. If it's trending down like this, you're looking to go short when prices are coming off of the strong resistance. Uh, if it's trending, if prices are ranging, you're mostly only enter, in, interested in entering off the lows and off the highs. Um, and you could see just about any of these shorts up here, uh, other than this one time right here, but we were trying to make a retest from here. So more people were looking for the retest, and you see what happened. You know, it, it broke higher and hit all those stops from the people that were trying to get short, and then it sells. It instantly sells off. And this is why we don't trade breakouts, because this is what generally happens. And then you come down here, and you break lower right here, and it fails, and it goes higher. And... Uh, so, and notice what happened. We had this double top across here. We broke above it, and it failed, and it was working lower. And that's generally what happened. So, um, it's very rare that, like yesterday, when we broke out of this range, that it follows off like that. And a lot of people had questions about, you know, why did I want to go short here and not go short right in here? Well, hopefully you can see the difference of that. We're looking to get short at the strong resistance. Where's the strong resistance? It's here. It's not down here. This is support down here. You had double support because you had a possible, you had this this right here, and you're coming off the low side. But on, in addition, 
you also had this support line right across here. So hopefully you can see the difference of why we might enter over here um, versus entering short right here or right here because, you know, you, you only want to enter when you're coming off. So when we tested this, you know, and then you come back and test it again, that's pretty obvious. And then when you test it right here again, then it's a, it, it's almost a given. And notice there's some other clues here. We're making lower highs every time prices pull back. And, and at the same time, we're kind of making lower lows. It took a little work to get through that support, but look what happened once it did. Everybody threw in the towel and everybody jumped on board and off it went. So that is the difference between entering over here and entering here. You want to have room to scalp out before you get to the low. This one's kind of iffy, but that's such a, there's a trap right there. Notice this right here. There's a first entry long, second entry long. So that's a failed second entry long. Uh, and there is room to get out on this one, so I like that one. But notice it bounced right there, went back, and, and then it trapped everybody here and turned down. And that was the sure, you know, you don't know that it's going to go right on through. You know, my guess was it was going to break down here and get five or six ticks and then reverse. But that's not what happened for one of the rare times. But this is what keeps people trying to trade these breakouts is that when they, you know, when they do go, they go really well. But most of the time, they do just like they did up here. They break out, they fail, and they're quickly going the other way. The idea is to buy the lows and sell the highs. And you, you can't do anything different. And But what normally happens is people are buying up here and selling down here. They're waiting till the, till it's had all its move. And then they're thinking, okay, now it, I'm sure the market's moving lower, so I'm going to get short. And they get trapped right here, and it's going the other way. And then it comes up here, and they say, okay, it's moving higher, now I'm going to get long, and they get long, and then it's selling off down here. And that's what happens to people. You have to understand that you're looking for strong support and resistance, and then you're looking for a reason to enter it in the opposite direction at that strong. So you're looking to get short when it's moved up here, or you're looking to get long when it's moved down here. Um, there's a little more to it than that, but that's the basic gist of it. So uh, one guy sends me his emails, an e his chart today, and I think he went long right here, but he didn't get long till up here. Well, look, the move is over. It goes a couple of ticks, and then it turns down, and then they, he, he enters again here, but he waits till it gets up here to enter. He wants some kind of confirmation, but by that time, it's too late. The smart traders are all entered down here, and they're exiting up here, and they entered down here, and they're exiting up here. The, the way we teach this there's, you know, the reason we go for four ticks is there's, there, you know, that's what you can get out of most trades. One tick more will often cause you to be a loser. So you, you're going for four ticks. So on a big bar like this, the idea is you can't enter on that break above that bar. That's the trigger. First of all, you got to have a trigger. Or you never enter the trade. Um, a real aggressive trader will probably just buy this thing blindly each time it comes back and then look how easy it is. Even if you'd bought this one, you know, you you could have gotten out once it ended as a doji. That might have been a clue. But there's another clue you're going to get a break here. Notice how these two moves went up and actually through the, the channel. And then this one doesn't quite get there. And then you get another push up and it get, doesn't get there. And then it starts kind of trading down. That's a clue you're about to get a trend line break. You don't know how far this break is going to go. Uh, but you need a good setup. And... You know, you never got a, on this one, I want a second entry. There's your new low. You got a first entry long and then a second entry long. You did notice here, when we're going up, you're wanting to count off the highs for the most part. This was not a second entry, but this is a breakout pullback long when it broke above this level right here. And, but the key is, if you get a big bar like this, if you didn't get a, if you didn't enter above this bar here, and you, you're always better to wait till you get a good signal bar. But look how big that is, and uh, even if you'd have entered one tick above it, it was no problem, and you scalped out easily. Look at that. Let's just count it. If you'd have entered with a stop, you'd have been in it 75 and a, 1675 and a quarter. Well, it went to 1677.50. So that's two points in a that's two points in a tick. You know, that's that's an easy trade. But what I would do on this big bar is once it broke higher, I'd drop a limit order right at the top or maybe even a tick or two in. And you could see, 
you could have got field at least a tick into that, probably two, maybe even three. And then it takes right off. And then it comes back right to the trend line again. So once it bounces off there, we're looking for some reason to enter. And notice this one didn't close on its high. So once again, that's one that you probably got to wait on the trigger and then drop a limit order in there. And I know it worked, but even with a stop, your entry was 77 and a quarter. And look, it went to 78.75. So you got an easy four tick scalp, but you got to enter at the proper place. You can't wait and enter when it's back up here near this high again because look what happened. Each time it broke a little bit higher, it snaps back. And, and you can tell it's weakening here, you know, based on those clues that I just told you that, you know, this one didn't get to the line. You pull back. This one didn't get to the line. And it didn't. And notice how these didn't go much further. Notice how far this move went past this high. And then this one barely goes past a couple of ticks. And then once again, it only goes by a couple of ticks and you get a big reversal bar. So that's what you got to be careful of. You need a trap. And, and then there's a, there's a long trap here. So you could have gone short, but I don't like any of these setups. And then it's gone too far. And then you're getting short too far. It would have worked, but you don't know that. It's too big a risk. But notice the new low right here. Then a first entry long, pull back second entry long. It fails. Um, it doesn't go any higher, and then it sails off. And uh, even if you went long here with that kind of a bar, you you know you might have uh, used a limit order. And even then, I still don't think you would have gotten out if you entered that at 77. Well, you would have got out. So there you go. It still would have worked. And but when you couldn't get any higher here and it pulls back and you don't get a little another failed second entry, it just keeps going lower. And I, but I'll show you over here the difference uh, of why this trade looks different than this one. And there is definitely a difference. Uh, of course, if you entered, so you see how critical it is. I guess what I'm getting at is you see how critical it is to enter no more than one tick above the trigger bar. And like on this trade, this is really your signal bar right here, but it's not a very pretty one. So you might wait on this bar uh, and when it went higher and then just drop a limit order in there and let it come back and get you. Sometimes it won't, but usually if it's not a very pretty bar, the odds are pretty good that it's going to come back to get you. And when I, when I say, and you can see we're still working lower over here, just like I was talking about earlier. Um, but we're 12 minutes into this, and I haven't talked about the trades. But that is important stuff, so I hope you understand that. Um, where you enter and where you exit, you can't fiddle with that. You can't change that. You can't enter late, and you can't try to hang on too long. You've got to scalp out. It. The whole idea is you scalp out at four ticks, and if you think the trade might go further, hold on to a runner. That's the only way to do it because these trades are designed for scalps. They're not swing trade scalps, although you can use our strategy to turn them into that. But if you follow the rules, you're going to have a lot better success. But we talked about these two trades. Notice here, this is one of my favorite setups. First, you got a new low. There's your first entry short, a second entry short. It turns up. Look at that big bullish bar. Um, on this one, you actually could have gone along right there because it's a trap. So the trap, it's, and it's not a trap until it breaks above this bar. It, it could make a four or five bars in a row, but if one of them never breaks above the other one, it's not a trap. Just because it didn't go any lower doesn't mean it's a trap until it goes higher. So that's key as well. So you could have gone long. This is really your original signal bar. They got the same low, so it doesn't matter. You put your stop in the same place. So what I did was waited for it to break and I dropped a lemon order back in there by the tick and look what it did it came right back and filled me to the tick one tick inside that and then it runs up and that gives me a whole lot more room to play with but most people are too scared to buy on a pullback there they'd be trying to short that and then next thing you know it turns and goes right the other way and they're like what the heck and then the same thing here it pulls back it bounces right off your trend line again. It goes higher. The trigger was one break above that, but this is not a very pretty bar. So again, use a limit order. And you can see that would have got filled two ticks back into that thing. And what I'll normally use is the 
uh, either the close or maybe a tick if I have to go into the second bar maybe only a tick back into the original bar or whatever so uh, so like this one since it broke above you just go back to where the two closes were and you see it went two ticks so it was a perfect entry and then it runs straight up and you're out just real quickly no runners you know you can see the markets waning a little bit there and then you kind of get a double top but you but you can't be going short here until you get a trap. You might have thought about going short if there was a good set, set up here, but I didn't like it, and I missed a good trade. But so what? That's you know that's the way it goes. And uh, you're better off to miss a trade than get on the wrong side. And um, so this is a two-legged pull back to the EMA. Um, failed second entry. Uh, yeah, failed. There's failed second entry short. And you can't really see that because, and you see the little double bottom. So your trigger is one tick above this bar right here. And on a little bitty doji, you can't hardly be greedy and try to use a limit order back in there. Because you see what happened, it broke out and went straight up. And I don't think a limit order, I just used a stop there because you're getting in so low. And there's plenty of room to get out before that high. And it's a good thing I didn't have to get all the high because it never could get it before it sold off real big. Uh, and so... You don't know where the sell-off's going to end, but you just follow the price action until you get another trap or uh, it's clear the move is going higher again. But you know you're looking for, this is the first break of this channel, uh, this trend, line, trend channel. So you know you're going to get a retest. And here it comes. And if you drew this line across this top, um, you might have been suspecting this right here. I almost drew this in green, but... Um, but you never know that you don't get a pull up and one more leg down and then a retest. And you don't know that this the market wasn't so weak that it, that's the retest right there. That could have been it. But once it starts going higher again here, I was pretty confident. So I just waited on a trap. I wasn't looking for any shorts uh, because we hadn't had a, a new high yet. So I just sat tight. And guess what? You get a short trap right here. And somebody will probably ask me, why didn't you go short there? Because I was, but the reason is because I'm looking for the retest. I understand the rules. And I'm following the rules. I don't want to take a short. Plus, look at all that overlap right there. But there's your, here's your new low. First entry short. Second entry short. Two tries to go lower. They both fail. You got this little channel right here. You figure if nothing else, you're going back to at least here on this retest. Again, a little doji. Because it's a trap, as soon as it ticks above that, you're good to go. Easy scalp, once again, um, because of the trap. I trapped everybody to the short side. And then we're going higher again here. And then guess what? We make a new high. First entry short, second entry short. It finds a triple bottom. Look at that nice bullish reversal bar. I just put a stop right there. Maybe this one, I almost put this one in green because you're really close to these highs. But you got them trapped now, and you're looking for the new high. And uh, anytime you get that trap, it just about always works. So boom, and you're and that was man, that was a quick move. And um, you never know that you don't get another leg up just like this one. We didn't, uh, which is you, this is more typical of what happens when you break above a strong support like that it snaps back real quick and goes the other way and gets back in the trading range and then I didn't really see a setup here that I liked you might have considered going short here but I just don't really like that setup um, you had a little gap here so it wouldn't have you know I really thought it might break and fill that gap and turn up and make end up making another leg like this but it didn't it just went lower so I missed another good trade there but you got to be patient and then it's coming down. And this one I drew in green because there's been no break of this little channel. You've got this possible trend channel working up. And you can see we bounce there and it comes back and tests it and it goes high. So now you got a second entry long. You got the break of the trend line and a retest that just kind of retested the trend trend channel. But but this is what I was really banking off that and the fact that you got all this support across here as well. So uh, and there's a there's a trap there too. There's a failed second entry short. Notice this new low, first entry short, pull back second entry short. <coughs> uh, excuse me, and it reverses. Look at that bullish bar. Um, when it breaks higher, 
either have your stop there or drop a limit order in. It did have those matching highs, so I, this is one where I just dropped a limit order at the high and I did get filled and real quickly you're out. Um, there's a possible short here, but again, I didn't like the setup bar, and by the time this bar finished, you've, you're back down here at these lows, and there's a good chance it can snap back, but it went lower, and then I didn't like going short right in here because of this line right here and the fact that we've, you know, we may make a higher low. There is a trap right here, so uh, notice that first entry long, pull back second entry long, and then it turns down, but I wasn't about to go short there. And I considered going short after this bar, but it just scared me, and um, I missed it. Um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, just because I didn't take it doesn't mean that it's not a tradable setup. So I'm going to go ahead and mark it in green because some of you might have taken it. And I always get if you know if somebody sees a trade that they thought looked good and I didn't take it, they'll want to question me why I didn't mark it or didn't take it. But there is a you know a trap right there so um, but it's just risky because of because of this line more than anything but then this one's just right here so I just didn't like it I felt like we had a channel working up here and uh, but a lot of times when you get overshoot on one side you're gonna get one on the other but we did have a little bit of overshoot right there and I was scared it would just break down a tick or so and trap everybody and go up and you know sometimes when you try to anticipate traps you get it wrong and so I was wrong I wasn't wrong by much. It, the trade would have worked, but I, but you know, that's I thought it'd only go a tick or so and then turn up, but it went a little further than that and then turned up. And then notice that's the first break of the channel, so there's a chance you're going to get a retest too. But sometimes you only just get a retest of the trend line. But notice this channel working up. Then you get the break and you got two legs up to a new high, and then it turns down again. And you know I can show you that over and over and over. So draw your short-term trend lines if you need to. And notice this, we got a break. First entry long, pull back second entry. I drew this one in green because we found strong resistance here, but there's a trap. And um, what I you know, what I recommend doing here is when it, when it triggers, drop a limit order in there if you got to take this one. And um, I think it would have worked either way. A stop would have got you in at 78. And now it would have failed, but if you'd got in at 77.50, you can see it went to 78.75. So if you just dropped it one tick into that bar, it would have got filled, and guess what? You had another scalp there. Uh, but if you didn't do that, you probably would have got burned on that one. But again, it's so close here, and we're and you know we're just looking for a one tick retest, you know, for a retest of a new high. So. That, a lot of times on these shorter term trends, that's just one tick. Um, but it went it went enough to get that scalp, and that's you know they'll usually keep pushing and fighting if there's a trap to get so that it doesn't turn into a double trap. It's very you know you'll see some double traps, but not very often. And then that was it. I was done for the day, and um, that got us just to, you know just before noon. So, but. Um, you know what I what I always tell people: if you do get trapped, um, you know a lot of times you just reverse. You got to be careful with that because if you're reading it wrong or you're not, it's not really a trap. And you think it is, but notice right here: even if you'd have got trapped right there, uh, it's not a failed move until it breaks below this bar, either below that bar or this bar before it, you know, goes much higher. So. If you did get trapped on this one, just put you a reversal right there. And when it breaks down, reverse. And look, you could have made it all back, what you lost, and then some. And so you would have come out better. And that's usually what happens on traps. If you got trapped short right here, there's no really trigger for a good short here. But if you did, you could have reversed right there and made it all back, plus some. So, again, you got to be careful with that. I'm hesitant to talk about reversing uh, when traps set up because... You know, what will usually happen is people will buy up here and it's going to go down and they don't reverse until it's down here and then it turns right back up and then it gets right here and they reverse again and uh, and then it breaks on up and, you know, you just, you got to know what you're doing. But the key, going back to what I originally talked about, is you're looking to buy down here or buy the trend, you know, pull, it's 
pullbacks to support. If that's going down, you're selling pullbacks to this line right here. If that's going up, you're buying pullbacks to this line right here. If it's in a range, that's looking to for buy setups down here. Once you know it's definitely a range and selling up here. Look what would have happened if you just sold every time prices came up here. You would have had one loser maybe um, if you, well, if you'd have sold this one right here. That's, that's pretty much it. Uh, and if you bought every time prices came down here in reverse, you wouldn't have had any losers. All of them would have been winners. But but that's it's so hard for people to buy. They all want to sell down here because they've seen this big move. So they're thinking short and they're getting suckered in. But all these people, the smart traders, were selling all the way down. And they're starting to buy back down here where the support is. And that's what they're going to do. And then they're going to start selling when we get up here. But they, but most of your smart traders knew we were looking for a retest, and so they were still buying until we got the new high, and then they probably all sold out, and a bunch of weak traders all bought in up here, and uh, and those weak traders buying in, not knowing what they're doing, they allow the smart traders liquidity to get out, and then the buying dries up, and phew, the bottom falls out of because now they're all looking for it to come back down here, and guess what? Then the selling dries up. And those smart guys are buying, taking it back, and they just do that over and over because they know what to expect. So anyway, I hope that makes sense. I hope that I haven't confused anybody, but uh, we got 30 minutes worth here today. And uh, but I know a lot of that was worth talking about. But you got to enter in the right place. You got to exit in the right place. You can't fudge. You can't be late. You can't be early. There's just so many things. We the rules are specific, and if you follow them specifically. You'll, you'll do a whole lot better. You'll be surprised at how badly you will do if you're one tick late every time. Because there's so many that only move that just enough to get your four tick scalp. And then it's racing in the other direction. And I can show you that quite often. Here's a good example right here. If you didn't enter at the right place, if you entered a, even a tick late, you never got enough ticks. And then it sold off and it was a loser. So you had to enter at the right place. Same thing, um, where's another one? Right here. If you didn't enter in the right place, you were in trouble. But this one's risky here now, especially now that you've seen prices turn down one, two, three, well, actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine times prices have turned down there. And by that time, that's enough to know that it's dangerous going long right there. And that's why I drew that in green. There is that short trap, though. And those rarely, you know, those usually will push it on through. And that's why they create those traps, because they can't get it where they want it to go. So they create the trap and then run it up there. And what they're doing right here is they're trying to, they know that there's a ton of people sitting here by, with buy stops up here. Um, just waiting to buy this thing because they think if it comes up here it's going higher and they buy and those guys are selling to those buyers knowing that they're going to end up with prices way down here in just a little bit and they and that's why they do that and that same thing happened here uh, same thing happened here same thing happened up here so that's why we don't buy and sell breakouts um, the only way to get in is to get in down here and use your runner to see if you're going to get out. Or either that or you got to have a good trap and you're looking for a retest or something of that nature. And that was the same thing here. You were looking for a retest, but this is a real short, much shorter term trend than this was. So you might could have just gotten one tick and turned down or maybe even a double top or it might have even just retested the trend line and turned down. So this is a little more risky, but for the reasons we just talked about. So 30 minutes worth. I'm going to wrap it up. Um, hope you had a good trading day. If you didn't, hopefully maybe you learned something from some of the important things we talked about today. But I'm going to wrap it up. It's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.